comments to access at telus.net. We are not Shaw. All right. Hello and welcome to our new show, Access, Volunteer Produced Community Television. I'm Sid Tan, your co-host, and with me, guest co-hosting today, is my son, Jordan Tan. He's just arrived from Singapore. He's a Carlton Journalism and UBC Law grad. Had to put that in as a proud father. Welcome to the show, Jordan. Thanks for being with us. Thanks, Dad. On today's program, we have Jeff Scott, a local video producer with Tri-Cities Community Television, uh, which serves uh, Port Coquitlam, Coquitlam, Port uh, Moody, and surrounding areas. We also have Andrew Fiore, a local video producer, whose most recent film is on homelessness, and uh, he has produced documentaries on subjects as diverse as breast cancer and the downtown east side. Thanks, Jordan. And we also have today, later, Wendy Havens, uh, an Access cast and crew member who will be interviewing Laura Pursuit, the outreach coordinator at the Downtown Eastside Education Center. But first up, uh, we will have Jeff Scott after we roll this short little intro to Tri-Cities Community Television. What is this event about? The event tonight is uh, a fundraiser, uh, an awareness event, and an advocacy event uh, for the Go-Go's. Barbara Clay is speaking tonight and talking about her experiences in Africa and seeing some of the programs that the Stephen Lewis Foundation has supported with money. Hi, my name is Diana Dilworth and I'm very proud to be the president of Crossroads Hospice Society. And did you know that May is National Hospice Month across Canada? And one of the largest awareness... There are about 52 artists from all over the world being represented here tonight. And some of the concepts are unbelievable. Now you wouldn't necessarily wear these outfits to dinner or to a movie, but the creativity behind them is unbelievable. We're handing people paintbrushes and they're creating something uh, on the hydro boxes that wouldn't have been there otherwise. So it's just it's beautiful. And um, by having the actual people from the area do the painting, it, um, it helps them care about what they're doing. We finally got a group of artists together at the Art Centre to exhibit and participate in the Art Walk. We have, uh, we have so many fantastic artists and teachers here at the Art Centre and I feel it, it was the greatest opportunity for us to actually do an exhibition together and to uh, open the doors to the public and let everybody see how vibrant this little tiny house is. Hello, and we are back with Jeff Scott, the producer of Tri-Cities Community Television, an award-winning show which covers Port Coquitlam, Port Moody, Coquitlam, and surrounding areas such as Anmore and Belcara. Uh, it's an award-winning show. Welcome to the show, Jeff, and tell us about the award-winning. Oh, thanks for having me on the show. Uh... The awards I guess I'm most proud of we've received from the cities or from the region for, uh, for the benefits we provide to the city. So uh, we have been nominated for a number of awards from the Chamber of Commerce, but last year we won an award from the City of Coquitlam and the Society for Community Development. It was a cult cultural diversity award because of all you know various cultures that we're providing programming to in the region. Oh, that's terrific. Well, as, as, as you know, and many of our viewers may not, but some of them may, uh, community television is one of three elements of the Canadian broadcasting system. It's what belongs to the community. And uh, I know that uh, community television providers get $6 million a year in public money through the community television levy. Uh, but my understanding is uh, you don't get very much of that money or any of it. And I'm just wondering, how do you fund your show? 
Yeah, I'd say you're probably correct on the right on the last part. We don't see any of it, uh, so we don't have a, a dime from the cable companies, although they do provide us with equipment. So uh, when we need an mobile to come out, cover a larger event, they do provide us the equipment to, to do that. Um, we would like to get a single camera out so we can do ENG shoots as well, but so far that has been uh, turned down for us. So equipment-wise, we're pretty much using our own gear. And likewise, funding, well, it's pretty much out of my own pocket. So, uh, um, you know, we buy our own tape and uh, we're looking for sponsors and other means. The cities are looking at ways of giving us a little bit of funding, but uh, that's our first step. Well, for those that don't know, though, uh, you started community television the same time I did about, my goodness, 25 years ago. <laughs> and I recall at that time there were over a dozen community television offices five full-fledged studios, uh, and now we're down to such smaller amounts. I believe there's this studio here, which we were just only able to get into a couple of months ago, and Shaw's been here for 10 years. I'm just wondering how you've been able to survive uh, what I would call the downloading of community television costs to the community. Certainly, it's been a, a tough uh, road for us. Um, there was a, a much wider expanse of facilities available to the community before deregulation. Uh, once the uh, deregulation occurred, the CRTC decided, uh, well, cable companies can run it on their own. Uh, certainly things were reduced somewhat. Uh, so uh, the studios disappeared. Actually, the region I'm working in, the Tri-Cities, was the first to suffer a loss. Our office was, was shut down. Volunteers were told, thanks so much for your time, but uh, there are no longer opportunities here. If you wish to volunteer, you can go into Burnaby or Vancouver, but there's nothing locally anymore for you. And of course, this has continued to a great deal of the communities until only Vancouver was left. Yeah. Your show, as I understand, is 100% volunteer produced, just like our show. Yes. And I'm just wondering, like, I, I, I will be buying lunch out of my own pocket for this crew, and I buy lots of other things, and I'm sure that, that you have a lot of costs too. And I'm just wondering, uh, how you managed to survive all that? Well, it's been fairly difficult for, for sure. Um, we don't have any share of the cable revenues, so we pay for everything out of our own pocket. Um, I do cover tape costs and do, on the larger shoots, pay for a crew meals and whatnot. Um, we are looking for sponsors, and occasionally we do have uh, the occasional sponsor from the community step up and uh, give us a cash donation for one or, you know, our larger projects. But uh, our day-in, day-out coordination of events, uh, that's, that's our own cost, and that's our own time. It's 100% volunteer. Yep. Yeah, and, it, it, and to me, it's stuff that was downloaded from cable companies to community groups. But enough of that. Let's just get back and let's talk about your show. Mm -hmm. uh, tell me some of the highlights that you've done over the last two or three years you know, at Tri-Cities. Highlights. Well, um, hmm. We, we cover a wide variety of programming, so certainly uh, you know, community events such as Canada Day, our most recent production, and this year we were doing Coquitlam. They had a big Canada Day celebration of their own. But uh, apart from those larger events, uh, really to me the core of our programming is uh, supporting groups like uh, Share Community and Family Services. So they're an organization out in the Tri-Cities that looks after the food bank and caring uh, for the needs of the community. And uh, we do a lot of programming around supporting their efforts. So what would you think will help Tri-Cities get a better boost and be able to work more and produce more regular programming and, and more concentrated in the effort of presenting the community? Well, certainly financial uh, support is the biggest concern right now. Uh, we are working with the cities to get uh, some funding, and uh, it seems to be going uh, rather slow, but at least it's progressing forward. Uh, the next step is to work with the province, of course, and see about getting some funding there. Um, it has been slow going, because as you, I'm sure, know, community TV seems to kind of fall between the cracks when you're applying for funding. We're not really arts, so you don't get the arts funding. And we're not really media, so a lot of the media funding that's out there isn't available to us as well. So it's really uh, incumbent upon us to turn to the communities and, and seek their support so that we can keep providing the service. I know that uh, last year uh, Metro Vancouver sent in a report to the CRTC about how important community television is for communities. That is, the province have uh, knowledge and uh, federally there's uh, CBC, 
community television is for the community. We're running out of time now, Jeff, so I just want to ask you very quickly, uh, how can people get a hold of you from the Tri-Cities or people that want to work with you? Well, uh, certainly if you're interested in working with us or if you're uh, interested in uh, sponsoring our program, uh, you can first of all check us out on YouTube. Our channel is Tri-Cities TV. Uh, really all we've done is post our material up there. It's not very organized uh, yet, but uh, it gives you an opportunity to see what we've put out there. Uh, and we can be contacted through Gmail, where our account is TriCitiesTV at gmail.com. Thanks for being with us today, Jeff. Thanks for having me on. These are the times that Tri-Cities will be airing. Comments to access at tellus.net. We are not Shaw. All right.